when we're training hard, you, you train or you recover. You, you're a professional cyclist and a professional doing absolutely nothing. It can be incredibly boring being, being a pro. If you're doing like just activities that aren't really going to help you in the race, then there's not much point in doing them at the end of the day. From day to day, we, well, we, we all have our own coaches. I'm working with my own coach, uh, Jody. So normally on like a Sunday night, all of my um, week's training will get uploaded to Training Peaks. Kurt Bogart coaches me. He sets training and then I upload the data from my Garmin. All I need to do is just look on my phone, like today, like four hours, with somewhat like efforts in, whatever, whatever it may, may be. If I'm just training, no racing, I go like three, three training days, one day easy. Yeah, probably in a week. It'd be maybe yeah, 25 plus hours. The biggest thing is consistency. Like every week, like if you are racing, trying to do a week where you still do the hours, but make sure you have the recovery in and that, you know, keep the training load. The only time I'll see my teammates, apart from like Tom and Gabs who live close to me, is at races. And depending on what races it is, I might not see a teammate for over like two months. It's quite full on when you are with your team at a race or a training camp or whatever. But yeah, for the most part, you, you yourself at home training. I don't find it hard because I think if you really want to make it into a career you know you've got to put that work in and obviously just love riding my bike with like friends even when I'm on my own like I don't mind riding on my own and training on my own so no I don't I don't find it much of a problem really. For me it's not hard living in Yorkshire there's so many people to ride with I like almost have my own team here that I train with. There's not many places in the UK that are, that are like it and um, there's so many roads that you can go on like nice quiet roads. It's great going abroad, like on, on training camp and stuff, to like Calpe or Mallorca, but I think in the summer, there's nowhere I'd rather be like training than here. I think the, the main aim of Team Riggins Lecol is to develop young riders and turn them into professional bike riders. You know, go go on to Pro Conti or World Tour teams. Being a development rider means you know racing, making mistakes, and learning from them. Especially if you go if you're going to race aimlessly, it's pointless because you're not going to learn anything because there was no, no target. So if you're going to race with a target or a job, you're either going to be successful at it and you know that's how you do it, or you're going to make a mistake and you can learn from it what you give will eventually get given back to you. So in my, my first year on the team, pretty much every single race, I would just like help helping other riders. But then eventually it will become your turn to, you know, start going for the actual results and have other people helping you. At the start of the, of the year, like I was, I was heavily marked in races and I sort of, sort of tried to be too clever about it and let people go to the road and then try and, you know, come, come later the front and in races you need to be at the front or within touching distance of the front to be able to you know contest the final and and to do that you need to almost be aggressive to get away from other riders that's the biggest thing I've learned. From my first year on the team to now I think I think I have grown as a rider um, especially in like racing situations you know like where where to save myself where to where to like push on. I managed to salvage something from the first half of the season and yeah, win Rebay, which was, it sort of made up for everything really. Like if, if I hadn't have won there or just didn't have the legs and it was sort of would have been, you know, my confidence would have taken quite a big hit, I think. I knew I could win, but I didn't feel like I could win. So it was, it was, yeah, it was really nice. Me and Rob live and, and train near each other and yeah, tomorrow we've got the Otley Cycle Races. Best race of the year. <laughs> I uh, started racing, that was one of my first, first races. 
Yeah, my dad's won it twice, my brother's won it three times, and I've won it three times. So in different categories, of course, but uh, my dad did organise it, and then now my mum organises it. Obviously, we'd both like to win it. We'll just see what happens if it's uh, if the odds are in our favour. The crit races are all are the are probably the most fun races to do. Like oddly, there'll be thousands of people watching, so yeah, it's always a pretty mega race. So my name's Sonia Harper, um, I'm organiser of Otley Cycle Races this year, here we are in Otley. Um, I'm mum of uh, Tom and Joe Pidcock, they're both racing this evening, so uh, it should be an exciting night for lots of reasons. We've got uh, six races in all, we're starting off, um, it gets more serious as the evening goes on, we're starting with a balanced bike race for toddlers <laughs> and it gets more serious with uh, youth races, under 16 races. And then we have uh, the Chevin Cycles Classic Race, which is for the amateur men. And then we go into the elite women, the women's Grand Prix, and then the men's Grand Prix, last of all. So the men's elite race uh, is about an hour, uh, 24 laps of the circuit, 50 kilometres and uh, it's a fast and furious event. It's almost like a mini like Kermes that you find in Belgium because there's not that many tight corners and it's just super, super fast. I mean, I really like the course. It's, it's something different to all the other crits in the UK. I mean, it's my favourite of the year, so. This is a really, really popular race. Um, so it's been going for 34 years. We're building in popularity all the time. So cyclists from all over the region come, lots of locals come who are not cyclists. But really, if you're from, if you're a cyclist and you're from round here, this is a race to win, really. <laughs> uh, I think in our race there's something like 110 riders, which is quite a lot for such a small circuit. So I think like the first like 20, 30 minutes of the race, it's really important to be at the front and just to not get caught out in like crashes or just don't drift back. Yeah, so today I did a training ride this morning, four hours. Um, I went into Recce, the time trial course for the Worlds. Um, and then yeah, in about an hour the start of the Hartley Town Centre. I'm feeling a bit tired so uh, I think I might just wait for the sprint to be Last year I was on the, off the front of the whole race and we got caught with two laps to go so uh, yeah, this year I think I just, just go for the win. So my first introduction to Otley Cycle Races was when my husband used to race. We used to come when the, my boys were small and watch Giles race. And so uh, Giles won the classic race a couple of times, which is pretty inspiring for my boys, really, to see their dad win in front of really big crowds. Probably it makes sense, actually, like all the people cheering for him. And uh, I think that did inspire me quite a lot, actually. I, I never really knew it did, to be honest. Yeah, I do get nervous before these, these sort of races. Um, mainly because you just want to win them so bad. Nah, well not, not before this race, you know, this race is, you know, it's just local and, uh, you know, all, all friends, family and you know, those people we know are here, so it's just, it's quite a relaxed atmosphere and so yeah, you know, good banner. It was a pretty fast race to be honest and uh, didn't win. I'll second my line this much. For Team Wiggins the call. Second place, Tom Pickock! Yeah! 
I was in a move just towards the, towards the final and then you know, the team started doing lead-outs, it got brought back, but I, you know, I stayed in the front and uh, yeah, around the last corner I went round the outside of Russ Downing and well, he crashed, so I, I hope he's all right. Towards the end I was getting hungry and I was like, I hope I don't like bonk here, but um, yeah, I just didn't have enough speed coming out the corner and uh, yeah, Matt Bostock just rolled me on the line, so. Matt Bostock! <laughs> It's almost embarrassing coming second, you know. I mean, especially when it's that close. Like, you know, it could have been. I could have gone around the corner a little bit faster, and I would have won. So, you know, yeah. Obviously, I was training this morning. If I wasn't, then, and if I was focusing on this, I probably would have won. But yeah, there's bigger fish to fry, and yeah, the world is. Well, I was riding the world's course this morning, so that's uh, yeah, the most important thing in the in the long run. <laughs>